startuprad.io, your podcast and YouTube blog covering the German startup scene with news, interviews, and live events. Hello and welcome, everybody. This is Joe from startuprad.io bringing you another episode of this month in German startups. For the people watching this on YouTube, they can tell I'm wearing a Hawaiian shirt. So it's the summer episode, June 2021. And Chris is there posing as well. Can you do that again, Chris? I have a blue flower, floral arrangement on my shirt. <laughs> yes. And for everybody who's just listening to this, guys, you are very fortunate here. Um, quick reminder, as we are doing this always, Chris is in New York. I'm in Frankfurt. Right now, there's a thunderstorm going on outside, so you may hear some background noise. Plus, Germany is playing uh, England as we're recording this, so maybe you also hear some noises from there as well. Um, but nonetheless, we keep going here for you guys. Um, as I said, this is this month in German startups, June 2021, and we are reporting live from Germany's largest unicorn wave ever. We announced two new unicorns for Germany, Scalable Capital and Photo, formerly known as Freight Hub, and Germany's first Decacorn Salonis valued at 11 billion US dollars. The 2019 unicorn WeFox raised a large funding round of 536 million euros, 650 million US dollars. About you, IPOs at 23 euros a share at 4 billion euros valuation, um, which is 4.85 billion US dollars and Austria becomes the next most valuable startup with Go Student valued at 1.4 billion euros, 1.67 billion US dollars. Um, after they just had their first unicorn in March. Plus, Solaris Bank is rumored to be in talks of a 100 million VC deal, which would make them a unicorn as well to buy up a competitor, especially active in this frenzy of unicorns creation um, are SoftBank from Japan and Tencent from China. We have a special episode on the unparalleled unicorn creation, which is available on the same channel. Um, if you want to know more about the new Deka corn and the unicorns in Germany and Austria, um, you may want to listen to this episode as well. We keep here the coverage of the unicorns to a minimum. This will be the last recording of Startup News before the summer break. There will be no regular news in July or August, but we will be back with news at the end of September, wrapping up summer news. And we are so looking forward to the summer. Guys, you can follow us on Linktree and there is just a little bit to say, uh, time to brag housekeeping. We will go back to a weekly publication schedule. This means only one episode each week, starting in calendar week 27 from July 5th on and stay safe, everybody. And a little bit bragging. Argentina was the 53rd country to download us in through their podcast charts. We made it even in the top 100 Apple podcasts entrepreneurship charts. Muchas gracias. Chris, you got some top news, right? Yeah. And um, I mean, you already mentioned it. We have uh, some more in-depth information about them in our special episode. But so here, just for completeness's sake, um, Germany has its first Decacorn, um, a new word basically meaning a unicorn, which is not worth more than 1 billion, than 1 billion US dollars, but rather 10 billion US dollars. And in that case, it is after a Series D funding of more than $1 billion. And the company's name is Celonis. Um, and Celonis is a B2B company that helps you with um, process mapping, process automation. It interacts with uh, your SAP software, your sa so Salesforce software, and it helps you to identify um, room for efficiency improvement within your company. And therefore, 
yeah, to me, it feels like a pretty German success story because it's not very fleshy and not aimed at the consumer, but rather making money and working well in the background, I guess. We also have another unicorn, um, namely Scalable. Um, it's another startup from Munich that made it into this uh, club, the Unicorn Club, and it's a neo broker. So in part of the other big industry we are talking often about, the fintech industry, um, Scalable started out as a robo-advisor. Now they turn increasingly to online brokerage. Um, their brokerage also offers a trading flat rate model taking on Trade Republic, which we talked about recently. Um, we have an episode about them too, which you can find in the show notes or in your podcatchers. And um, Scalable itself raised at their most recent investment round, which was a Series E, more than 150 million euros, around 100 million US dollars. And so they now stood, with this, they stood at a 1.4 billion US dollar valuation. Um, some more information about that in the show notes. Then we have Fortu, which used to be called Freight Hub, um, that also reached unicorn status. Um, and we've talked about it in here, our uh, This Month in German Startup News, for quite some time. Um, now, after the rebranding, this uh, Berlin-based logistics startup raised 200 million US dollars from investors, also led by SoftBank, which you already mentioned. And so they are valued at 1 billion euros, around 1.2 billion US dollars right now. And they also added City Ventures and G Squared as new investors. And if we look south a bit um, to Austria, uh, we already talked about Bitpanda becoming Austria's most valuable startup in March. But now there is also Go Student, which uh, is taking the title away from them. Go Student is the second unicorn in the country, um, with, and it became such unicorn such a unicorn with a 200 million euro. 240 million US dollar investment led by SoftBank and Tencent. So, and as you can tell by the name, GoStudent deals with online learning. And this recent funding round valued the company at 1.4 billion euros, meaning around 1.67 billion US dollars right now. Germany's existing unicorns are doing good. Another fintech monster funding, Berlin-based Intratech, WeFox, grabbed 650 million US dollars at 3 billion US dollar valuation. And about you, the Hamburg-based online fashion retailer, IPO'd in Frankfurt at a 4 billion euro valuation, raising more than 800 million euros. And then we made up a term, Germany's rumor corns, a uh, German plank check firm, 468 SPAC, said it entered exclusive negotiations to buy children's entertainment company Boxing from Düsseldorf for about 1 billion euros. Um, this is the Tony Box producer for everybody who has children. And Solaris Bank is rumored to work on a 100 million euro funding deal, making them a unicorn as well. Um, it's reported that they would need the 100 million to take over competitor focusing on other geographies. Um, a spokesperson of, uh, of Solaris Bank surprisingly refused to tell which entity this is. We talked in our April news about their SPAC deal for Solaris Bank, but this was targeted at 2022 anyways, and the SPAC deal appears to be not of the table. Our all-time favorite wire card. Um, there is uh, still the investigative, investigative committee ongoing. Uh, they heard more than 100 witnesses and we assume they will wrap things up before the next federal election taking place on September 26th here in Germany. There's only a little note. Philippines file criminal charges against former wire card CFO Jan Masalek which is still on the run. This is small news since Mr. Masalek already faces charges in Germany and if ever found may up and may end up serving a long time in Germany. Moving on to the German ecosystem as a whole, 
Um, and we can, you can already tell that probably the biggest issue here, the biggest topic here is that Germany is approaching a general election in fall. On September 26th, Germany is going to elect a new parliament and also a new chancellor after 16 years. Um, Angela Merkel is going to step down. So um, this may also mean that there will be changes to laws and regulations regarding startups, regarding companies. And uh, we will keep you updated about this. Germany might have a new government when we hear, uh, when you hear from us the next time or a new chancellor before Christmas. Um, but it could also be that we are a bit optimistic with this the last time it took quite a while. It's all depending on the results. Um, related to the end of Merkel's uh, term, the Digital um, Trade Association Bitcoin in Germany analyzed that Merkel's promises analyzed Merkel's promises to the German startup scene. Uh, for example, the administration wanted to start 25 um, steps, 25 measures in 2018, which should have been fulfilled after two years. That was the initial plan. 15 of them have been finished, says Bitcoin. So 10 promises broken. Related to that, we've already recorded another bonus episode on the upcoming 10 billion startup investment program from the German federal government with the digital commissioner. That recording will be published during the summer when this podcast here has its regular break. Then there are fintech, fintech trends for the DACH region. DACH is D-A-C-H and giving you a hint that this is Deutschland, Austria, Switzerland. Um, the funding bounces back in 2020, actually. So um, it seems as if the COVID crisis here is not as grave as everyone had initially thought. And we have European fintech startups with overseas ambitions who fill their war chest at record clip. More about that in Pitchbook. We are now getting into the hub section. As always, it's more about when we discover the news than any other um, measure of um, sorting. Um, Frankfurt. 8.5 million for Frankfurt-based SaaS fintech Crowddesk. Of course, you can learn more about them in our show notes down here. We have interviews with both of the founders. And there is the co-living startup, Habit, closes 24 million US dollars Series B. And they merge with Frankfurt-based Homefully. Of course, we have an interview with Homefully. You can find down here in the show notes. Munich-based InsurTech Finanzchef 24 CFO24, wins New York-based Markle Style as investor. We, um, I, I, I was wondering, are you currently using a Cherry mechanical no, keyboard, Chris? I'm an Apple kid. <laughs> okay. <laughs> As of today, 29th of uh, June, they just IPO'd uh, the company behind Cherry uh, Cherry Keyboards, Cherry AG, IPO'd in Frankfurt this day. It looks pretty good for them. And another news from Munich Arrive wants to accomplish what Amazon could not pull off with Prime Now, a 30-minute last-mile delivery service. They start in Munich. And final news on Munich. Uh, the company called Wellstar raises 35 million to expand its telemedicine solutions. Now we go to a city we love to cover because it's not in the regular startup news anywhere. It's called Offenburg. It's a lovely little town in the very southwest of Germany. Actually, the next largest city is Strasbourg in France, uh, which is closer than Stuttgart. Offenburg based accounting software for freelancers and SMEs called Cefdesk raises 50 million euros from investors Arena Holding and Hybris founder uh, Carsten Thoma, who jo are joining existing investors. As Chris just so lovely said, let's look a little bit, a little bit more to the south. Vienna based, Vienna based prop tech startup. Propster raises 3 million euros and Runtastic co-founder invests in Vienna-based AI tool that recognizes food in pictures. For Switzerland, we just have 15, uh, 
uh, top 15 biotech startups in Switzerland making a difference in Europe. Chris, I think you want to talk about uh, different companies. Yeah, some more about um, a couple of companies. So we in Germany have also a, a debate surrounding the last mile delivery um, companies of groceries. And um, one of the biggest names in that business in Germany is called Gorillas. Um, they are based, uh, they have some issues going on in Berlin. Um, because they're uh, the delivery people for them, they are complaining about high traffic, blocked roads, blocked pavements, and um, a steady stream of couriers. And this sparks protest against the Gorilla Warehouse in Berlin. But they are also planning to just enter the U.S. market in New York City, um, where they would have some very different kind of competition, I guess. So, um, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how this business will do in Germany. Uh, we mentioned it here a couple of times. German are very, very price sensitive when it comes to groceries. Of course, there is a, um, there's a convenience factor to it. So we will, we will see how it goes, but there are also very well established brands in the German grocery market trying to come up with different kinds of promises. Um, the, uh, probably one more word about New York City. Um, we have an additional article about that with the headline, a German e-commerce startup wants to disrupt the New York City grocery market with deliveries to customers' apartments in 10 minutes or less. Um, I can testify that just a couple of weeks ago, a small market opened up where you can order your stuff. It's called 15 to 20 or 15 20. Um, and I mean, I don't know. When does it become a bit weird? <laughs> like promising in 15 minutes, in 10 minutes. Oh, I don't know. I, I, as Maybe a, yeah. this will go down the way that at one point you don't need any storage at all. No bundle of pantry, no sub-zero fridge. You just order. Yeah. But uh, I don't know. As a Protestant German, I feel bad ordering at these companies because I always feel bad that I make someone deliver me deliver me something that I just should just carry into my apartment by myself. I don't know. Related to that, there's uh, the topic of instant delivery, which is still hot. Flink, um, a Berlin-based instant supermarket and competitor of Gorillas, has three takeover offers at hand, reports Deutsche Startups exclusively. But they also raised 200 million euros in venture capital, and um, which is around 240 million US dollars, and also mentioned by Deutsche Startups. And so they raised at all this money at a 900 million US dollar pre-money valuation. Back to you with other companies. Thank you, Chris. I actually like that you always add new sound effects to your, to your New York sound bar. Um, the pipe height reaches Europe. In Germany alone, three teams are working on alternatives to venture capital funding, similar to pipe, which aims to be the NASDAQ for revenue. And then we have some other noteworthy news. My muesli offers customization of cereals. Uh, they used to be a darling of the German startup scene. Now they close many of the retail locations and surprisingly, they then turn profitable. Uh, Berlin-based health tech startup, Ada Health, raises 73.8 million from Samsung, Bayer and others. And the German TV station, the the uh, Westdeutsche Rundfunk spell for the Americans WDR reports that hundreds of e-scooters are sunk to the bottom of the River Rhine. It appears some of them are leaking, maybe from batteries. This is concerning since the River Rhine it delivers drinking water to 30 million Europeans. Let's talk a little bit about Corona. QVAC tanks as potential COVID vaccine fails the trials. You can learn a little bit more about QVAC down here in the show notes. We had a blog post a few months ago about them. Uh, 
Berlin-based Finleap, formerly a uh, fintech incubator. Now, I do believe a corporate fintech builder. Uh, and one of their parts is called Finleap Connect. They raised 22 million to expand its open banking platform across Europe. And as always, you end on a high note with us. SAP bought Zig Navio for 1 billion euros, which is 1.2 billion US dollars. Everybody who is listening to us already knows the exchange rate by now. And now uh, the founders appear in an interview. What I found pretty interesting is they're not playing back or doing nothing, but actually the founders set up a green tech fund to combat climate change, which I personally found very impressive. And of course, we do have a few articles for the people who want to stay ahead of the curve. Chris, it was as always a great pleasure having you here with me, especially since you agreed on those stupid outfits. And um, as we said, we'll be back September 30th. If something new happens, I'll bring a bonus episode just by myself because Chris goes into his well-deserved summer break and hopefully me too. And keep in mind, this summer break means only one publication a week. Guys, thank you. Stay safe and enjoy your summer. Have a nice summer. Stay cool. <laughs> Bye. If you are a professional looking at the European startup scene, Germany is a place you cannot miss. Fortunately for you, there is StartupRad.io, the authority on German startups. This English-only podcast brings you fresh interviews each week. Most likely, you have never heard or read anything on these startups before in English, but you will in the future. Be ahead of the curve and subscribe to StartupRad.io podcast or check for the StartupRad.io internet radio station. Check your Alexa for the StartupRad.io skill as well.